What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man Eric Sheets Haber. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Uh, Sheets had the big win on Saturday. Uh, yes. We've been, the, the True DFS team has been coming through with the baseball wins lately, and Sheets with a big one. He wins the lottery in, on uh, on Saturday. Sheets, talk a little about that, and then we'll get into the slight smoothie. Yeah, and I'll, I may as well do my, uh, whatchamacallit. Oh, it, it already disappeared. Shoot. It disappeared from the, uh, from the, from the recent lineups. I'd have to go into True DFS to, uh, I have to go to Discord to find it. But, um, but that's okay. So basically, so it's actually really weird the way the process works. So, so I got to go back to Friday for a second. So Friday, they did the White Sox debuted this guy Sosa, who was like 2K. And he was like, uh, I think he was going to hit sixth or something, whatever. He was like really, really high owned or whatever. And he, he put all made all the White Sox projections and all the stacks just kind of go through the roof. So on Friday, I just had like basically just announced the White Sox were like kind of almost a lock and uh, and they ended up getting owned and they, they failed. So then Saturday came and they and, and Saturday came. And once again, I, I had projected that Sosa was going to be leading for batting first. So the White Sox showed up as a huge, huge, uh, huge layover or whatever. And I went on Saturday. I looked at Saberson. I looked at whatever. I went to Discord. And I said, you know. I hate to be be like this again because they failed yesterday, but the White Sox just seemed like kind of a lock, you know. And then, and then even though Sosa was going to bat ninth, he just kind of like made the whole thing work. So I, I ran a Saberson build, and it was giving me like ninety percent freaking Chicago White Sox. I'm like, you know what? I'm not playing ninety freaking percent White Sox. I'm just not doing it, right? So I manually adjusted it down to forty percent, right? Mm-hmm. And I just went with, with with whatever else came up there. So that was like step one. The step two was, was just as just we were getting to lock. I noticed that like a bunch of guys were out. So I so, noticed that Jed Lowry was out for Oakland. So I said, oh, okay, I, I got to replace him with someone. And somehow, some way replacing him, I could replace him with Tony Kemp, who's batting first. Okay. Had, Kemp had the monster day, huh? Right. So I said, okay, I'll just put him in. Right. Yeah. And uh, so then when I'm watching it and then, you know, obviously the White Sox are failing and I'm about, maybe 20 minutes away from going out for, for dinner with my wife and the Oakland's really just doing it. You know, they're really killing it. And then Kemp hit a home run. And then I'm like, wow, I'm in like I, eighth or ninth. I'm like 15 points, 14 points away. I just need one home run. And there's like no one else. And so I'm watching it and I'm, and, St- and Stacy's like, uh, okay, we got to go. So I'm like, yeah. Oh, just so you know, by the way, this Oakland guy is up. If he hits a home run, we win 50,000. She goes, Oh, I'll watch that. Right. And, 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 and this is the, the top of the eighth, right? And the thing is, is that I knew that, um, whatchamacallit, that I wasn't going to get like another at-bat or something like that. And I was having to root for extras or something like that. So I really needed it in the top of the eighth. And the guy struck out. I'm like, all right, let's, let's get out of here, right? So we left. And then I got to the, to the restaurant and I, and I reset my, my, just to see what happened. And I saw I like got 50K. Like, what happened? I forgot that in the bottom of the eighth, I had Michael Taylor from the other side coming up. And he oh, had a home right. run. Oh. <laughs> so, he, so he had a home run. And, and that's uh, so that so that so that that got me the dub. So uh uh combination of uh of, of making a manual adjustment for White Sox, paying attention, which I almost don't do on the weekends to guys that are ruled out. I yep. took the extra five minutes to put put guys in, and that made all the difference. And and um, and even still, I did end up with 20% Oakland, and nobody on the whole team was more than five percent owned. So that was uh that was all good news, and uh, let's go. <laughs> that's I love it, it man. No, that's great. I'm, I was stoked to see it. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we can keep momentum going, finish out June strong, and uh, yep. yeah, we'll, we'll go through this this late tonight. Why don't we pull up your screen and we'll we'll go game by game? But yeah, that's a uh, was it a four three one that you had? I think it was something like that, wasn't it? I think it ended up. Some, no, I think I, I think I might have had five Oaklands. Oh, you did? You have five? Okay, I may have had five Oaklands. That's possible. um, but yeah, that's uh, yeah. And then away we go. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. Um, oh, and, and just to further rub it in, by the way, that was the day where Christian Javier pitched up basically a no-hitter. Yeah. I scored 40 fantasy points. I didn't have him. I don't didn't think I had him. Yeah. Didn't matter. That's crazy. <laughs> oh man. Well, that's awesome. Anyway, let's let's uh let's jump into tonight and uh and hopefully keep the good stuff going. Yeah. Um overall slate thoughts uh, other than the Dodgers are just going to be it's well that's that well, well that's that's the that's the thing. So so you're going to have to make some decisions about what to do with the Dodgers and whether, again, I we say this every single slate, is it going to be playing the Dodgers, but in a weird way, playing the Dodgers with weird pitchers or not playing the Dodgers, right? right. And, and part of it depends on what other hitting options there are and what pitching options there are. And the first look at the pitching options, 
it's a little, uh, I don't know, it's a little, I don't want to say fishy, but it's, uh, you could, you could go some different ways and, and there's no locks. Um, and I, I, I think I have a couple of ideas, but I don't know. Let's, I'm curious to hear what you think here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree that there are no locks. Um, I, I mean, look, like even in this, there's going to be a lot of weird pictures that I'm just going to throw out as we go along. I think that we have to sort of throw out Fetty a little bit as, as a possibility. It is Pittsburgh. Um, you have a, a guy who actually, you know, what's he, he's put up. Uh, so basically you're getting near 20 fantasy points uh, every third start or so on average, just in general. And it's Pittsburgh. He keeps the ball on the ground. Uh, I'm certainly open to the idea of using a kind of gross play in Fetty. And the, on the other side of it, I, I absolutely don't mind if, if people want to play any of these really cheap uh, pirates. And I really, uh, uh, the nationals are, are extremely viable to me and they're going to be very low owned because of, I actually don't entirely know other than the Dodgers, why they're going to be as low owned as they are, but I think Soto will get ownership. I just don't think the rest of the team is getting much ownership. So I'm interested in both of the offenses a little bit, but again, it's always hard for me to stack against Fetty just with the ground ball rate. Um, although he does get blown up every now and then, but you've got Vogelbach and Chavis. You've got at 2.5 and 2.1. Cruz, they bumped up to, to 3,800 now that he's leading out, but Sawinski also at 2.9. You've got some, some cheap bats here you could do some things with. Unfortunately, cross positions with Vogelbach and Chavis. I think I'm leaning as Washington is one of my stacks that I'm going to use as a pivot off of the Dodgers. Um, and I'm open to a mini Pittsburgh, but more it'll probably be like a two or a three man. How about you? Yeah, well, it's interesting as you, as you gaze some of the pitching as well is that it's it's – there's nobody expensive, you know, that you really need. Um, right. So you're going to get, you're going to get po the possibility of leaving money on the table. Like if you want, you know, that, that, that's another thing that, that you, that might end up uh, being worth doing. Could be I, uh, Jack. Yeah. I mean, I have Pittsburgh rated as, as, as a good value as they always are nowadays. Um, the only thing I worry about, like you said, is kind of ownership because first of all, Pittsburgh has been showing up as good values across the board, like mm -hmm. every, every day. And for whatever Fetty is or isn't, I mean, people just, just, you know, always play against it. You yeah. Know? Um, so whatever Pittsburgh is supposed to be owned, it's probably going to be more. Um, so that's, that's the one thing that kind of bothers, bothers me about it. Um, but I do like that. I didn't, it's funny. I didn't really think about uh, getting to Washington. So I'm going to, I'm going to get, I'm going to look at that a little bit more. Um, and it's a I'm bullpen not game. It's a bullpen game. So I understand it, but I do want to point out that the bullpen is bad. So the long relief guys are going to be bad. So I, I think you're going to have some decent hitting opportunities. Maybe, maybe this feels like a mini stacking situation. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off their sheets. Oh, no, that was all. And, and so I'm, I'm really just either leaning towards Pittsburgh and again, even Pittsburgh, you know, I, I, I we have to, I have to ch double check ownerships, but I, I just had this weird feeling that Pittsburgh is going to be that team that everybody pairs with the Dodgers um, in five threes or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I just be, I just want to be careful with that. But if you want to pair Pittsburgh with somebody like, you know, Toronto or the Yankees or the Angels or something like that, or if you want to fade the Dodgers, that, that's, that's, that's fine. Um, yeah. and, uh, and once again, I'm probably, I'm probably not getting to any, either of the pitchers. Yep. I got you. Um, all right, let's jump over to, uh, to the next one. Your Yankees and Oakland and we, we might need the, the Mrs. Sheets weather forecast later today or something because. Yes, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting a little of that. I'm getting a little, uh, you walk to work today, you know, it's going to pour. Yeah. And, and I'm like, Hmm, when is it going to pour? <laughs> it's like, right. When exactly is it going to pour? How long is it going to last or whatever it is? But there's definitely, uh, there's definitely some weather concerns. Um, and we just have to keep, uh, keep, keep an eye on that. And it makes, a, and it's, it's certainly worth uh, paying attention to because both parts of the Yankee experience here are, are playable, you know, uh, both Jordan Montgomery and the Yankee hitters, uh, Yankee hitters are, uh, um, you know, they're always in play. Uh, the one thing I will say again is, is again, it really shouldn't apply to baseball that much, but, but because I'm thinking about this in general, I'm, I'm going to continue to, to pound on this. The Yanks are coming off this freaking game, this series against Houston, which was just freaking wild. Right. I mean, it's absolutely wild at home. And how on earth are they getting up for a freaking game with shitty weather with Oakland coming to town right off of that? God knows how, you know, mm -hmm. um, so I, I, you know, if the Yankees were popular, which they're probably not going to be um, because of the Dodgers, I'd probably make a case to fade them. Um, so 
I, I'll probably, even still, I'll probably put the Yankees underneath some other teams just for that reason. Uh, but I do think that that Montgomery can certainly have a have a good game against uh, against Oakland. I, I actually, I want to say that he's probably probably the safest. I don't know the pitchers. I, I think it's possible to say. That. I think it's very likely that I can say that. Um, but uh, yeah, so Montgomery and and maybe some Yankees, but I, I'm inclined to go underweight on the Yankees. Yeah, I understand. Um, I'm going to point out just real quick on the you're going to have probably uh, Nuse, Noise and uh, Bride at the top of the order for Oakland at really, really cheap prices. Bride, Bride got think got pulled out of the game, though. I think he got hurt. Did he? Oh, OK, I still got yeah. him in the projected lineup, but I, I hear you. So he's if he's out, I'm just looking at some potential value. And by the way, you might get Pinder in there. If not, there's, there's just a lot of guys who are because you're talking to someone who was sweating with Bride yesterday on Saturday. So <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Um, but I, I do like the idea of, of look, if you're not going to play Montgomery, I think Montgomery is going to be extremely popular. Yes. And I, I think that playing in some of these A's when Montgomery has actually had a lot more home run issues than, than Blackburn on the other side, Blackburn mm-hmm. actually doesn't give up a ton of home runs. And it just, it, the, again, if they were going to be popular, I would go all away from the Yankees, but you had Donaldson at 3.4. Yeah. Uh, Blackburn's really easy to run on. So maybe LeMahieu and Judge fit that category, but I don't know if I want to play 6K hoping for a, a steal. Uh, it's just, it's a little bit tricky for me with the Yankees. I think that I have them. I definitely like them. They're on my list but I think I might prefer a team like Toronto today over the Yankees. And I am going to point out that Jordan Montgomery, I know it's the A's has a five and a half K prop. Jordan Montgomery has pitched in what? 16 games, 17 games this year. And has yet to hit more than strike out more than five hitters in a game, which is almost impossible to do. I actually think it's crazy. And for me to play a chalky pitcher at eight K that hasn't struck out more than five guys in a game so far this season. And it's and on a pretty big sample size feels a little bit, uh, a little bit like it's a, you know, it'd be kind of like a lazy, easy thing to do. I'm not going to say I won't end up with Montgomery because there's a lot of questionable pitchers, but I don't feel incredible about, about playing Montgomery at 8K with a, he's got a five and a half K prop and he hasn't hit that number yet this year. Just It is the A's, but I just think it's weird to like play a guy like that on, on a slate where we've at least got some other options. So and also, like you said, it's not like he's had like just nothing but tough matchups. I mean, he's like, look, look, Tampa can strike out. He only struck yep. out two. Mm-hmm. Then he had the he had the Cubs, the Tigers. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's not like he was only and he had Baltimore twice, right? You know? so, so it's not like he's had like impossible match. Another Detroit, another Baltimore. I right. mean, the guy's not striking anybody out. He's five. He has a five and a half K. Maybe we should just bet the under. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's the, the natural thing to do. Until a guy does it, just it's just usually going to be a good bet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> it makes yeah. sense if you have sixteen starts and you haven't struck out more than five guys, and most of the time you're in the the, the three and four range. Yeah, why not? Um, so this next, you know, what, what, this next game with the, do you have, uh, what do you have as the next one? Boston and, uh, no, Minnesota, Cleveland. No, I have Boston, Toronto next. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Boston, Toronto. So yeah, I, I did. Yeah. By three, by three, by three minutes. Yeah. Um, so you've got Siebold coming in here and he's going to be the fifth starter. I don't know how long he's going to go into the game. Always worth mentioning a guy at 4k when we don't really love a lot of the pitching. Um, I don't know where I, I stand on this one. I, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to play Siebold. I just, I would be more, much more interested in, in if I felt like they were really going to try to eat up some innings with him and that even if he struggles, they're not going to go to a, like one inning each for their bullpen. Boston plays to win every game. They don't tend to, to, you know, they don't tend to mess around in terms of like putting guys out there like that. So I, I don't know. I'm just sort of stuck on this. If, if we think Seabold is going to throw 75 pitches and, and that means they'll probably let him do it even if he's struggling. I think I want to play Toronto as my, my second favorite stack to the Dodgers. And I think that you're going to get, you know, some ownership on them, but because it's going to be so concentrated on the Dodgers, I think you're going to see Vlad lower owned because I think people are going to want to play Freeman. I think you're going to see T Oscar lower owned because of his price. He's more expensive than Springer. So that's one way you can get a little different within the stack. And I think Chapman and and Espinola won't be, won't be very owned as well as the bottom guys, Gurriel and Moreno, assuming that Moreno does catch tonight. Um, So I like this, this stack. And the question becomes, what do we do with Gaussman who we've seen good and bad from, um, I liked him the last time out. He was just okay, but he, you know, he did strike out seven. He's got the strikeout upside. His, 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 his uh, K prop today for what it's worth is five and a half. He's, I mean, which is not that much for a 9,800 pitcher. So I have Gaussman right now as a guy who I'm certainly considering using, cause I think it's pretty easy to do to, to pay up, but it's Boston. It's not a great spot. And, 
I, I, but I, but I am on Toronto. What are you, what are you doing with this game? I, I'm also going to revisit the Seabold thing. If I think he's got a leash because just five innings from a four, a 4k guy, when I don't love a lot of pitching is, is it mildly interesting to me, even in a tough matchup. Well, what's interesting is that, is that Gausman reminds me of, of, of Giolito on this slate. I mean, you have two guys who, who we think have ceilings and, 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 and neither of them got a guy out since the Eisenhower administration, you know I mean? <laughs> right, like, right. but you know, you know what I mean? Like you look at both these yeah. guys get shelled every game. And, 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 and yet still we have this idea that they have this 30 point ceiling, which I guess technically they do, but um, uh, it's rough out there. You, you know, like yeah. you can play like a super safe Montgomery, you know what I mean? Against like a terrible hitting team, or you could take shots at these Toronto's against uh, Gausman against Boston, which mm-hmm. is certainly no bargain. Right. Um, especially he hasn't gotten anybody out and, and, or, or, or worse, you think Julito against like Trout and, and Otani, you know what I mean? Like, and he gives up nothing but home runs. So, so it's a, uh, it's it's a it's a tough spot. First of all, from a pitching standpoint, I I didn't really think about the Seabold thing too much. I just was just really just thinking I'm just just playing Toronto and just 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 going with it. You know, um, uh, that that was that was my my that was my view. Is this that, that Toronto is is like such the natural you know anti Dodger play that they're probably going to be too highly owned for me to even play them. That that would be my 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 mm-hmm. guess. But that but that's what I like. I like Toronto here. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I just, I just want to point out that, I mean, it hasn't, it's not the highest level and everything like that, but I just want to like Siebold has been good. And, and there is something to be said to this for pitchers who haven't, they haven't seen yet. And I always joke that Toronto doesn't start hitting until the fifth inning anyway. Well, four right. innings from a guy who's four might be good enough. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. If you get your 15 fantasy points, somehow 14 fantasy points, somewhere in that range, you're feeling pretty good about it. Cause I don't see any pitcher. There aren't many pitchers on this slate. I see as going to, as going to break the slate. No. Um, all right. So, so we're both under into, into Toronto. I think they were my second favorite stack as of right now. Yep. And then we get a pretty decent pitching matchup in, in a little bit of cooler weather, but, uh, the two guys who I'm, I'm sort of stuck on, I think that I'm going to, I think that McKenzie might be, might be, uh, might be the one I'm leading with in this Minnesota Cleveland game. And I'm not interested in either offense, but McKenzie, you know, we know there's upside there. Minnesota has strikeouts in their lineup. Uh, and McKinsey just, you know, he's, he's just a good pitcher and he's 8,800 and it's a slate where we don't have a lot of guys to love. Uh, obviously umpire information would be helpful, which we don't have till later today because McKinsey with a, with a good pitcher's ump, it, it really does help him, uh, with the control. And I can't play Sonny Gray against Cleveland. I just, I'm having a really hard time playing anybody against Cleveland. They just do not strike out period. Um, I don't know if anybody's got really gotten them except for Gray had eight strikeouts in a game against them this season in four and a third. Um, I don't know. I, I'm personally on the side of just McKenzie probably in this game. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, I, again, I, I have these guys rated below the others, um, but uh, yeah, McKenzie certainly can get 20 fantasy points. <laughs> Sonny Gray, he could, I, he could do it too. I mean, again, I, I have these guys just a little bit below, but I think these are the guys you kind of have to play if you want to play the Dodgers, right? I, 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 I would be so, so far to say is you just literally can't play Montgomery with the Dodgers. Um, mm-hmm. So I think this is the, this is the stuff that you have to try, you know, like maybe, like maybe both of these guys or something like that, right. or, or, or go back to Pittsburgh, play Brew Baker. I don't know, like some, some, something like that. Or, I mean, there are other guys we can play that we'll, we'll get to whatever. But um, like you can't play like Montgomery, like Montgomery Kirby and the Dodgers. You know what I mean? That's just that's just asking for trouble. Right. But 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 so that's why I, I think these guys you have to say, OK, projections, I don't care. I just kind of want to have to play these guys, hope the other guys don't do it. So uh, right. I'm with you on this, but I, I wouldn't dismiss Sonny Gray so fast. Um, it's just I, a I, matchup. I just I mean, Cleveland strikes out less than every other team significantly in baseball. They make pitchers work. And yeah. it just, it, that's the only part that I'm worried about. But I get you with Sonny Gray. I just think McKenzie. The yeah. matchup is just the strikeout upside is higher for McKinsey, but I, I hear you with gray. It's just so hard. I, I hope I just, for a good umpire and playing both. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, okay. I just am having such a hard time these days with, with trying to take anybody against Cleveland because they just, they, I mean, I, I watch my pitchers go out there and pitch well against them. And it's like seven innings, two strikeouts. Like, you know what I mean? That's when they don't hit the ball. That's when they, you know, and then, and then of course they always have the chance of actually hitting the ball as well. So uh, I mean, yeah, I, I could, I, I, I could see the argument for gray and McKinsey. I don't think we're, but I don't think either of us are, are particularly excited about the hitting in this game. I think maybe a contrarian Minnesota stack is on the table, but probably not what I'm going to do. Well, and meanwhile, now you get to probably the best pitcher on the slate, right? Which one? I, I mean, I'm not, I'm just talking about a pitcher like Pablo Lopez. Oh, Pablo Lopez. Yeah, he's right there. 
you know um so he's expensive but not really right he's only 9100 right and the, you know the cardinals uh, you have the reputation for not striking out that much but i don't know like what, what are we looking for today in pitching you know um i think 20 would be i, I like i like it you know i i like i like lopez and i'll tell you what i'll tell you what i like uh i like wainwright too here um uh Again, we have to just keep our expectations low on a slate like this. But again, if you want to play Dodgers, this is what you have to do. Um, so I, I like I like both of these pitchers here. I don't like either of the hitting, mm-hmm. um, but I, I would I would definitely play either or both of these pitchers. Yeah, there's another thing I like about this. First of all, both teams with a lo- less than four run total. Uh, Wainwright, you get a good matchup. Uh, Lopez, while they don't strike out a ton, they are righties. He's good against righties. And you've got 10 miles an hour wind blowing in from left field. There you go. So it's another excuse for it's going to be harder for those righties to really get you. Um, yeah. Now, even if they're not straight, they're striking out, that's kind of an issue. But I agree that both of these pitchers are interesting. I think Lopez will be low owned. So I'm into that idea. But I, I do think Wainwright is going to be get some ownership. And I think for good reason. It's 7,600. It's Miami. Uh, again, with the righties, the ball, the wind blowing in from right, uh, from left, excuse me. And I think that Wainwright is definitely a guy we can we can feel comfortable to to get us ten to twenty fantasy points, maybe with some upside on that. But it's it's pretty bleak. I mean, these are not ideal situations. No, all the guys are in tough spots. Uh, you have both of these pitchers have a four and a half K prop, and it's it's you know right off the bat, I think that both those are actually reasonable bets. But like, I don't know, man. I I, I think they're both interesting, but it's sort of like a lot of a lot of meh for me so far on this slate. Nothing I'm overwhelmingly excited about. Uh, pitching wise well speaking of which i mean what's wrong with these next two guys i mean like like perez and bubik um you know uh you have you have perez who you know we've spoken about at length all season yeah. um he's got plenty of good games he had like what literally one, one, bad, one game. bad game that's it literally one bad game and on a slate where where every pitcher is fishy in a way mm-hmm. um He's, he's, at, he's at Kansas City. I mean, it's not the not the worst matchup, not the greatest matchup, just like kind of a matchup, I guess. Um, and if all I need is 20 fantasy points, the guys, you know, guys got an ERA under two and a whip 1.1. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's good enough for me. I don't think I'm going to need to to play Bubik here. Uh, it's like one of those weird things, though, that if I play 30 lineups and I get to him, I'm not going to not going to get rid of him just because yeah, no he's against Texas. You know. I agree. Um, so uh, I like I like both these pitchers, and uh, only because I like other teams better. Do I not really get to Kansas City or Texas? Because um, you remember you have a you have a slate where the pitching is not expensive, you know. Right. So so if you want to fade the Dodgers, you can play Toronto Yankees, Angels. You know what I mean? Like you can do it um, mm-hmm. without having to dip into the, some of these teams. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I I'm not overwhelmingly in love with like anything from the hitting side in this situation i do think mitch garver stands out as a like a, a as a standalone catcher at 3.2 that's certainly reasonable uh, nate low there's some cheap bats for 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 texas today in the projected lineup so maybe you could mix in a little bit of a texas stack there uh you got it's about 80 degrees it's nice hitting weather for kc um but i'm not like I, if it was anything it'd be some texas bats and and they're they're expensive outside of the guys who Maybe, you know, McGarver's a great price and, and Lowe is a reasonable price, but lefty, lefty for Lowe. We don't even know if he'll play. Josh Smith is 2.2. It's, I'm open to Texas as a, as a secondary stack, um, but mostly this game is going to be, yeah, I think if you're playing a bunch of lineups, you're dabbling with both these pitchers into some because they don't seem any better or worse than a lot of the other guys we're talking about, and they're going to be significantly lower on, so. So you have the immovable force against the irresistible object or whatever it is. You have like the best hitting team like ever, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, against literally the greatest like Coors pitcher like of all time in Chad Cool. Okay, yeah, like yeah. like they just they just brought him over this. I just I'm just just gonna put it out there. Here 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 his here his starts at home. Just just the at home. Cleveland 16 fantasy points gave up three runs. Atlanta 15 fantasy points gave up zero runs. San Francisco got rocked. Uh, Cincinnati, uh, 19 fantasy points gave up three runs. Okay. And this, I think there was one earlier, um, where he did well also. Um, so, uh, with that said, uh, you have the Dodgers who, who rate to be the, the best stack on the board by an incredible amount. Yep. Um, and, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say that. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I would bring up is I'm not going to get to, uh, 
I don't think I'm going to get to Anderson uh, from the pitching side. Um, but I'm certainly interested in, in, in Colorado if somehow they go on home um, at home. Uh, so I'll, I'll definitely think about that. I didn't really check the ownership on Colorado. I just have them rated pretty high. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, they're in Colorado, like everybody else that's in yep. Colorado. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, uh, you know, Dodgers rate to be the top stack for me. Uh, if, uh, are you showing McKinstry as, as getting in at 2K? Um, I, 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 I am not sure where we're at with McKinstry by the way because I, I I don't know why there was plenty of pinch hit opportunities in the game yesterday and I happened to be with my family so of course the Dodger game was on okay and pinch running opportunities that they didn't use him in where they normally would so I am sort of under the impression that we might still get Trace Thompson out there okay. um, at 2k so so what are, so what are we what are we doing here so I okay so I my first thought is this feels like a good spot to stack the Rockies um, Tyler oh. Anderson for what it's worth has, has not lost a game this season he's eight now um and has been very good this is his former team you know i love to stack against the former team guys yeah. um and i think an unknown colorado in good hitting weather is seems like a good move the dodgers are coming off of a tough sort of an emotional series against atlanta to be true to be honest um yeah. that's a bit that's a you know and this is not their a plus lineup there's no mookie in this lineup we don't have you know even though trace thompson you know bellinger's batting eighth so it makes it lineup look like a good lineup but like then you've got trace thompson who i know he's had a couple of moments this year but like he also strikes out every, every time he's not like doing something, he's striking out, he strikes out so much. Um, but he's, you know, he's 2K. You could play the, the bottom of the Dodger stack, get some lower ownership. I think that the Lux, Bellinger, uh, Lux and Bellinger both get boosts from playing here. Justin Turner, a guy who hasn't had, hasn't had much power this year, gets a boost playing there. Obviously everybody does, but these guys get it a little bit more, you know, Muncie and Freeman, they can kind of hit it out anywhere. And Trey Turner is going to be just massively owned. Like I'm seeing projections on some sites and, as high as 50 percent. i don't know if it'll go that high at 6k is that that's very rare right it's pretty rare yeah i mean and but they, they, they i mean they, they just stand out so much ahead of every other stack today and trey turner has so many ways to get you there um you also have a guy in cool who just you can run all over the place on so yeah. all of these guys have stolen base upside turner freeman um uh taylor T taylor lux bellinger all of these guys trace thompson all of those guys can steal bases um so i uh, the Dodgers obviously are stacked. That's the, but the way to get maybe maybe different is maybe you stack both sides of this game, especially if you get like the the extra little you know maybe you get a hitter's ump in this game. We don't know who's going to be yet. Um, it would it would make it stackable. Both these pitchers have a three and a half K prop in Colorado, and it just feels like we we should be doing stuff with this game. But I think the best thing to do might just be playing Colorado at low ownership, and I do think they're going to be low owned against Anderson. So I I have Colorado circled as as another team along with. Uh, to, with uh, Toronto that I think might be uh, might be the best pivots off of the Dodgers. And uh, but again, I'm probably going to be mixing at least some Dodgers into most of not all my lineups. Well, you can get Daz at 3K, uh, McMahon, a little lefty, lefty, whatever, at 3,300. Yeah. You Thank get you. CJ Crone at low ownership because Freeman's at the same position. Yep. Um, so uh, you can do that. And Rogers, 4,600. These are just the guys that I identified. So I, uh, I definitely, uh, I definitely agree with you. I, I think that Colorado is definitely uh, something, you know, uh, yeah. a good pivot. And um, that's about it. Yeah, and, and don't leave Elias Diaz off your Colorado stacks. I'm telling you, okay. I, lo I love the pitcher versus their former catchers. So uh, it's always an oh, okay. there you go. a little bit back there. So I always like to take that little weird spot. Um, all right, Sheets. Now we have a really interesting game, okay? This is a game that if it was played – well, I, I, last year, if, 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 if we had Syndergaard healthy, but I guess two years ago, these pitchers would, we would absolutely probably be seeing like 75% owned of each of these guys at their prices. Um, you know, we talked, we, we've got a lot of speculative pitching. Why don't we speculate on, I mean, Giolito is going to get some ownership. I don't think anyone's playing Syndergaard and maybe that's fine, but he's 6,900 with a lease against a White Sox team that hasn't really been like, you know, we've, we, we certainly have seen the downside of them as they failed as Chaco a number of times last yeah. week. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm into, I mean, and, and they only have a 3.9 run total. I'm, I'm kind of into taking a shot here. Uh, I also like giolito has got a six and a half K prop. That's the highest I believe on the slate. Um, so I kind of like both these pitchers uh, personally, and I'm not finding, I, I do think if you're not going to play Giolito well, or either of them really, but if you're not gonna play Giolito, I do think that getting to the, 
the low owned, the other LA guys are, are probably a good way to go just because of the power that Giolito has allowed this year. And so I, I can certainly see an argument made both ways, but as of right now, because I feel so sketchy about the pitching and, and by the way, for what it's worth, Giolito has, his strikeout range has gone completely all over the place. Three strikeouts his last, each of his last two starts, eight before that, three before that, eight before that, seven, five. Like he's just all over the map right now. And it's just, he's not really finding himself. He's also been in some really tough matchups. Um, I, I'm very open to both these pitchers. I think that's, that's, that's probably what I'm going to do is use one of these guys. And I think it's probably going to be Giolito in my main lineup uh, as of right now, even with all of his volatility, uh, at least he, I know he has the upside. I like the price on him. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. It feels weird to have a pitcher who's got negative points as chalk as one of your favorite pitchers. So it doesn't feel great in that sense, but I like him better than I like Montgomery. So I don't know. That's where I am. Yeah. Um, I wish he's gotten somebody out recently. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, be nice. anybody, I mean, yeah. I guess Toronto and Chicago are no joke, but then, then six runs against Texas and, and Jesus, it's uh, how is he going to be chalky? Who's going to play him? I, I, it's, it's, I think it's hard. They're going to play him. It's, it's, they're going to see You see the K prop. It's going to affect the projected fantasy points. And I mean, he's like right now, is he the highest raw points pitcher on this? Yeah, he is. He's projected on that way on both well, a couple of major sites. Let's put it that way. Um, let me just see real quick. Let, let so, me just so I, I, I do have him, you know, as, as I have him almost within a point. I mean, like really yeah. of him, Montgomery though, Gausman, you know, so, uh, but I only have him two points above freaking Kirby. Who's like 7,100. Right? I know. Um, I know. And, and Wainwright too. I, I almost just rather just fucking play Wainwright and take my, take my, take my, get my six, six innings and not give up four home runs, but, mm -hmm. but you're right. I listen in GPPs. This is, this is, I was about to say in GPPs is what you have to do. You have to play these volatile guys, but I mean, he's going to be owned. I mean, what, what am I doing? Um, well, I go back to that, I, Hunter, I, that Hunter green thing. He had those two bad games in a row and he doesn't strike yeah. out. and people, and then he, then all of a sudden the chalk was against him. Right. And he ended up going, what did he go? Seven innings, give up one hit. I think he struck out 13 or 12 or something and put up like 40 some odd fantasy points. Um, that's that's the kind of upside you have with Giolito. The problem is Hunter Green was low owned and that made him a cool play that day. Giolito is gonna. I don't think there's any w world where he doesn't end up high owned on this slate. Is 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 um is like what? I wonder what Trout's like. Literally, it's it's home run prop is in this game. I mean, like I think I think, it's, he, I think it's an excellent bet. Whatever it is, right? I mean, like it's it's like it's more it's more it's not probably not even a money line. It's probably like one and a half home runs or something like that. It'd be it's like nuts. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's uh, I don't know if I could. I was about to say I don't know if I could do the Cindergard, but I mean, why is Cindergard any worse than any of these other kind of bow wows yeah. I gave out earlier? You know what I mean? Like, why is Cindergard worse than Sonny Gray, for example? Right. You know, like uh, if I'm going to play Dodgers, I mean, I'm listen. I'm, but also, I'm look, not at play Montgomery. look at who Cindergard's been facing. You know, you I know, but he's, he has no, nobody no swings and misses like, ever. I, I know, but it's but Casey they, they don't they don't swing and miss in general, especially against righties, and that's one. The Dodgers mm -hmm. before that, and he actually had a good outing, even yeah, though five like, strikeouts. Yeah, you know. fifteen fantasy points. Boston before that, another really tough matchup, and then yeah. at the Yankees before that, and then he had the beautiful outing against Texas where he pitched eight innings, but he's still not striking out a, a ton of guys. But he's sixty nine hundred. It's not like we're paying nine k for him with no strikeouts. We're paying sixty, you know, whatever hundred and sixty nine hundred. He's got a four and a half k prop. This is this is this is, this is what people are going to do. Okay, I, 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 there people are gonna play as we go into this. People are gonna play Kirby, yep, with Montgomery. This is in cash, right? And then play Dodgers. That, that's what's gonna happen. And um, I could, I agree with you. And I think in in tournaments, Giolito will be the next highest guy owned. You could be right. Um, I, it's, it's funny. I currently have, yeah, I, I, yeah, you're right because I have him right now own own like the same as Wainwright. Um, but when it comes down to it. In GPPs, people are going to play Giulio over Wainwright. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So speaking of which, um, so Kirby, oh, I mean, against Baltimore at 7,100. I mean, just if you play cash, I, this is exactly what you should – I think this is exactly what you should play in cash, like Kirby and Montgomery. I mm -hmm. guess that's probably what you should do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and as far as hitting goes, 
I've, I've actually had a little bit of luck when I've played Seattle. I'll just say that. Um, I, I, love uh, where you're, I love where you're going with this. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of into this uh, a little bit. Uh, just kind of a whole late night hammer. Give me, I'll take Kirby with, uh, with some Seattles and, and, and hope that, Hope that Seattle is 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 just lost in all of the pivots. You know what I mean? Like, you know. So that that's that's what that's what I'm kind of thinking about right now. I mean, look at who you've got for Seattle. For, uh, you know, I, I mean, look the, the, just just to go through Justin Upton's two K, Cal Raleigh two point nine, Trammell batting fifth probably two point six, uh, three point eight for Winker, which is too cheap. And then you've got the really big hitters like Rodriguez is just, I just love this kid. I think he's going to be just super. And no one's playing him at 5,700. Exactly. And, <laughs> and then you, then you throw, you can even throw an Adam Frazier. Who's a really good real life hitter. Who's having a terrible season, but then this guy was leading the league and hitting at the all-star break last year. So it's not like, you know, I, I just could see a Seattle stack sort of coming through. And I like the idea of pairing them with Kirby, uh, given that, you know, it's just that comfort zone. I do think that I, the more I look at this, like I think Kirby might be the safest pitcher on the slate. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. <laughs> kind of crazy to say that, but it but it is it is interesting, and I, and I like the Seattle as especially a large field tournament play, or maybe as a complimentary stack if yeah. you want to play like a Winker, Trammell, Cal Raleigh to pair with your Dodgers. You're going to get low ownership on all those guys, and they're cheap, and you'll be able to fit your Dodgers in. So you can play the Dodgers stack if you get the nice little three man, or maybe you go four four with a Dodgers stack in Seattle, and you include Upton. And you literally play, you know, Freeman, Turner, and uh, and then you can play these these cheapos, uh, these cheapos from C- Seattle. And if you feel frisky, go with a five man Seattle. You include Rodriguez and a three man Dodger. I think it's a really good way to go on a, on a, on this slate. I, I'm leaning more towards the, the mini stack for Seattle and Pittsburgh, but that's those are my two favorite. Like I don't want to say get weird, but get a little bit different type of plays. Um, that I don't think people are going to be on much, but I agree that Kirk, I think Kirby is actually the, the first guy yeah. I would start with when my, in well, my watch, mind. watch for the lineups, by the way, and this one, the angels, I don't know if you yeah. noticed over the weekend, but I think it was, I don't know if it was yesterday the day before there was this huge, ridiculous bench clearing brawl between Seattle and, and LA. Yeah. I um, heard about it, but I didn't it see it. It was just, it was just kind of was nuts. It ended up with some guy like throwing freaking a whole freaking pub of, ses- of sunflower seeds, like, 30 yards into the stands. ridiculous. <laughs> but, and Winker was kind of like the beginning of it. I think he was, um, so he was, I think he was at bat when this whole thing started. So I don't know what became of it. I don't know if any suspension. He's probably I don't know if they suspended that. because he did the double, the double flick off thing, which you can't usually get away with. He oh, flicked. okay. So, okay. Oh, so you know, so you didn't, you didn't. I, I saw that. I saw that thing. Cause it was. Uh, right. So, he, so just he, watch, he, just watch for, for suspensions and benchings and God knows what else they do in baseball. About this stuff. Yeah. But, uh, um, but, but yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that is, you know, we talk about like the, 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 the pivot pyramid, you know what I mean? Like you have the Dodgers up here, then you have probably Toronto and the Yankees, you know what I mean? And maybe, maybe the angels as well, you know, uh, off of them. And then after that, then the, maybe Colorado, but no one's playing, no one's playing Rodriguez at 5,700. Okay. Yep. <laughs> And I don't think people are going to play Suarez if you feel like in a 50. I agree. I totally agree with both of those plays. And then so, look, you can include you can include a Trammell or an Upton here, and all of a sudden right. you you save some money, and then you can put put your Dodger stack in as the four man if you want to. Yeah, you, there you go. There you go. I love that strategy actually. So or I, or, or just just do a couple of one offs from, from 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 the Dodgers in there or something. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine too. Um, but I, I do like I, I do like where we're going with this. I still think I, the Dodgers, Colorado, and Toronto will be my yep. five man stacks. Yep. And I might throw in a Washington, uh, and then the the mini stacks for me are are Pittsburgh and Seattle um, for my big buy-ins for for large field. You might see me with a full five man of, of, of Pittsburgh and Seattle, but I, the most part I'm not going to do that in my seven 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 eight 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 type things. Um, and and you know what? Like I'm ready to have another good week and finish this this season strong. Uh, I, oh, my other my pitchers. I again I have Kirby Geo. McKinsey, Lopez, and Wainwright all like in similar ranges, except for Kirby's as stand out as the guy who I'd probably, if I had to play one lineup, I would probably have him in. Uh, just, just while we have a couple of minutes, I, I'm looking at FanDuel real quick. And on FanDuel, pitching wise, uh, Giolito's is kind of a standout over there for me um, uh, at 8K compared to some of the others. Um, you have Montgomery at 9,200 there, right? Compared to Giolito at 8K. You have even Wainwright at 8,500 relative to Giolito at 8K. You have Kirby at 9K on FanDuel relative to Giolito at 8K. So, so uh, Giolito is kind of a tough fade for me over there. Um, 
However, I mean, you could go uh, close your eyes and play Gausman in 9,500. Uh, Gausman's got a better chance at the win and the quality start probably. Right. Yeah. Um, and and so, so does Montgomery. Yeah. So, so I think that Gausman's fine. And as far as, 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 um, let me just look at hitting over there real quick. Uh, aside from the Dodgers, same guys, Angels, Yankees, Toronto, then Colorado. A little bit of Texas. Or, nah, not really. Um, yes, yeah, pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, it should be interesting. I unfortunately am not going to be around for live. Another medical thing that I've got to take care of. But fortunately, it's just teeth this time. So nothing really to go crazy worry about. But it is going to be a long one because if, they've got to if, if, if I if I can make live, it's going to be just for a little bit. Um, so I'll just I'll just keep everybody informed. I'll, just so you guys know, if you guys are listening, um, I'll post in the discord. I will have projections, uh, updated projections up, but it won't be until, and I'll put the Discord, until probably 6.30. Um, so if it's like six o'clock, you're building your lineup, don't go stressing, you know, where's sheets, or where, 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 where are the updates? Because obviously the difference between a 5.2 projection, 5.3 projection in baseball is going to make all the difference in the world. Um, right. <laughs> I, will, uh, I, uh, I'm, uh, I will get there and I'll get up, it'll be closer to 6.30. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, I, I'm going to try to, uh, I mean, I'll do my best to, to make the live thing. I don't know if it's realistic for me to do it or not. I'd have to find a coffee shop probably. And if I'm able to get out in time, but, uh, but I will try to do it and I'll try to get whatever all of us I can out for you guys ask any questions. I'll be in discord and uh, let's keep the momentum going. Sheets. Let's oh. get some more, some more wins. Why not? Let's do it. Send it strong. All right. Good luck to everybody today. And congratulations again to sheets. And we will see, hopefully you guys at the top of the leaderboards. Let's go.